Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, uh, let's uh, continue this CO2 capturing model that we started uh, in the last two tutorials. If you remember, firstly, we introduced uh, this absorber tower and uh, together with a gas inflow and an absorbent uh, at the top of uh, the tower, we eventually got some clean gas at the top and of course some rich amine which was actually rich in CO2 and then in the second uh, video uh, of this series uh, we introduced a pump and a heat exchanger before we uh, feed this uh, mixture into the desorber and uh, we are trying to actually desorb uh, the CO2 again in this distillation tower and uh, get uh, the rich amine, lean amine, and feed it back to this uh, absorber tower again. Um, if you remember, we <clears throat> from the previous tutorial, uh, for the DP across the pump, we just uh, put a random number of 8 bar, and uh, with 2 bar inlet of the pump, we got 10 bar outlet uh, uh, in the pump uh, output. Uh, let's just uh, double click on the pop and reduce it a little bit further to get a more realistic number and I am going to just increase it to one bar and then for the heat exchanger if I click on this outlet feed now we have only three bar in the inlet of heat exchanger and uh, if we assume that we have only 0.2 bar pressure drop then the outlet is 2.8 bar and uh, for the temperature i just increase it a little bit further to 110 degrees all right and now we are ready to insert our distillation tower so if you click uh, if you search for distillation in this your in your model palette you can see uh, there is something called distillation column and you just drag and drop it here Okay, but what distillation tower mean? I mean, what is the process here? What does it do? So you have a mixture here um, uh, that you are going to feed it to your distillation tower. And the whole idea in the distillation tower is to separate uh, different components uh, based on different boiling temperature. So this uh, mixture is just entering the distillation tower at the boiling pressure and temperature. Uh, and then in the distillation tower, uh, uh, the lighter components start to evaporate toward the top and the heavier components uh, uh, comes down the tower in forms of liquid. And if I click on this now, you can see that you have also something called condenser at the top and a reboiler at the bottom. The condenser is trying to condense, to liquidify uh, the vapor that you have managed to get it out of this uh, distillation tower. Here is CO2, for example. You are trying to really extract the CO2 in form of vapor. And then by condensing it out, you get CO2 in the outlet. And the reboiler is basically to reboil, to, uh, to heat it up again, uh, the liquid, the heavy components at the bottom so that they start to evaporate again and uh, this process uh, uh, continues further. Uh, let's just uh, rename uh, the streams here. So for the streams we have an uh, inlet called the 2 desorber from before. Uh, the condenser energy system I just call it condenser and for this one I'll call it uh, um, Reboiler, okay. Well, actually, this is lean amine, and this is called uh, uh, reboiler, okay. And for the condenser part, the outlet of the condenser, I'll just uh, use this full reflux, and this vapor outlet is CO2, okay. Once you have done it, you can just click on next. Um, this is the reboiler configuration. You have three different type uh, of reboiler configuration and you have a reboiler type selection, but uh, let's just keep it as it is and then you click on next. Um, so 
the comp I mean the mixture is coming to the distillation tower distillation tower at 2.8 bar and I would like to put the condenser pressure at 2 bar and the reboiler pressure at also 2 bar okay and then you can uh, you have some optional uh, condenser temperature estimate and temperature estimate for reboiler I just keep it blank and then I click next uh, the reflux ratio is the amount of um, I mean in terms of molar or mass the amount of um, uh, the amount of liquid that you are going to put it back to the tower so I just put it to 0.3 and then you can click on done so before you uh, start running this simulation here um, uh, I mean, if you click on run, you will get a complaint from uh, Aspen Heises that uh, there, there are not enough specifications. You need to add one more specification. Um, we can do that. We can go to monitor. Uh, there is something called monitor here. And then you can see that you have your specifications here. One of them that is active and actually is empty is this um, uh, OVHD vaporization rates uh, which I don't have it then I can just uh, delete it and instead of that I'm going to add um, something called column liquid colored uh, column temperature and if I double click on that and then for the stage I'm going to choose reboiler so this is the temperature of the reboiler that you can specify here and then I just put it to 120 all right then you close it and then you can see this is active and then I believe uh, that you are ready to start the simulation and uh, uh, monitor the temperature versus the tray position from the top let's do that now you can see that uh, Aspen is trying to solve it it is iterating and uh, let's see if it can manage to Converge the solution. So, if you see that, uh, I mean, you can see the the iteration numbers. You have already like four hundred iterations with the error that is a little bit jumping up and down. But uh, we'll see if it managed to really to solve this equation. Uh, So if it's not able to solve it, let's just increase the temperature a little bit further and see what's really happening. Yeah, you can see that by increasing it to 140, it uh, really converts the solution uh, fast. So let's uh, look at uh, some of the results and see uh, uh, if you really managed to get uh, a lean uh, uh, a lean amine at the bottom of the distillation tower okay so if I double click on lean amine and then I go to composition and uh, if I just change this to let's say mole flow then you can see that there is almost a very little uh, mole of CO2 it, this is like a point Oh, 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 001 kilogram mole per hour of CO2 compared to compared to the value that you had from before if I just double click on this one and if I go to composition and if I change it the basis to mole flow again so previously you had like 3.41 kilogram mole per hour of CO2 in your reach amine feed to the desorber but now you have only 0.000 or one kilogram mole per hour which means that you have managed really to uh, get this uh, rich amine to really lean amine again uh, we can also look at the co2 at the top and see uh, how much co2 we have so if you go to for example composition again and then instead of mole fraction you click on mole flow you see that almost all the CO2 is actually leaving uh, the distillation tower at the top uh, of the condenser. 
uh, I think it's enough for this tutorial. Um, uh, so far, we have managed to uh, make uh, a real, uh, almost complete uh, uh, process of CO2 capturing by an absorbent. And uh, hopefully, we'll continue this uh, simulation model further in the next uh, video tutorial. Thank you very much. Uh, see you later.